two screens for Australian jumping. One of the stars of world jumping, no doubt, in the shape of this Edwina Tops, Alexandra. And Edwina, if, if I can just quickly bring to everyone's attention some of the, this uh, stellar career of yours. Now into your fourth Olympic Games, 2016, you were the highest ranked female rider in the world. You've won the global champions twice in 2011 and 12. Um, the, the winner first of 1 million euros. The list goes on under the $2 million um, Longines Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix. Fourth, of course, I'm forgetting also uh, in 2006 in the World Equestrian Games and what a thrilling final that was. It is an amazing career. It's an amazing career. And, um, and if I think back, 1995, the young rider champion of Australia uh, to where you are now going into your fourth Olympics, how do you view such accomplishments? <laughs> Um, I mean, to be quite honest, I mean, I've just been going step by step. And um, I think during COVID, during that time, um, I reflected back a lot on everything. And, um, you know, sometimes um, I have to pinch myself to see what I've done because sometimes I'll go into a Grand Prix or I'm about to ride a big class or walk the course and I'll say, oh, gosh, this is hard or this is difficult or this, that and the other. And, and then I remind myself of the experience that I've had and how long I've been at this sport for. And it um, certainly gives you a lot of comfort for sure. Um, certainly gives me a lot of um, stability in, in, in my career. And, um, you know, I, I, I know that without the amazing horses I've had, um, the great management that I've had, um, you know, I've had very good partnerships. I, I know I've been extremely fortunate. Um, mm. Of course, it's not just on one horse. It's on a lot of different horses, which which also makes me feel good, not a one-hit wonder. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I, you know, if I had to stop tomorrow, I'd be super happy with what I've done. Obviously, I'm not, and I want to continue <laughs> and do more things. Um, but, yeah, look, I know that, um, you know, these horses have really made my career, and, um, and I know that the work that goes into it, um, but, um, yeah, um, very happy. <laughs> Would never have imagined. That way, yeah, it is an extraordinary career, it's a stellar career. And we, if, if we may get to the Olympics in, in just a short while, but just touching on the young riders with the Stull Tops Young Rider Series back quickly here in Australia. Um, I was lucky enough to be commentating actually at Kabulchi recently in Queensland and, and was part and parcel of, of that team that brought the uh, the class over. Extraordinary, um, feeling I thought, atmosphere, excitement. Or was that just me or was that the kids? I think the kids were excited as I was too. But, but really, I love what you're doing by giving the young riders an opportunity to, to aim towards something, an aspiration, a beautiful rug, better prize money, qualifiers leading up to an eventual winner. As, as someone that trains young riders, I just think it's marvellous. And, and um, do, do you feel that need to, to really push back into Australia and, and give that return? Um, I must say, by the way, it was won by one Maddie Cinderberry, who I, I think you yeah. may have met over at your establishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, I mean, honestly, if Australia was closer and if you can find a way to get it closer, <laughs> I'll yeah. do anything. Yes. <laughs> it certainly is, um, with all the travel I've done, with everywhere I've been, um, it is the best place in the world. Um, so it's always in my heart. Yes. But on top of that, like I said, being so far away, it's it's just so hard for me to get back there. Um, obviously now is very hard. Um, mm. But I, I would love to be able to do more for the country. I would like to give more opportunities. Um, I, I know that the younger generation is so important. I know for myself where I started, the path I've taken. Um, I know there's a lot of um, ways of skipping some of those, <laughs> those yeah. parts that I went through, which at the end of the day, they are part of my um, success and um, and I always say you know that, that, that you've got to come up from a down and and that's the only way you move forward. So, um, but just to give at least something back and to give them some some kind of inspiration and a feeling of a championship um, and you know and a, and a nice series and who knows where it's going to go where it's going to end. Um, and lo I'd love to come back at, at some point in, in later times and and maybe do some clinics or help or advise or anything I can do because. I think giving back is the most important thing, um, and I think it. I feel very good by 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 doing that, and I feel like if I can improve 
even if it's just one rider or two riders, if they learn one thing at every show, it's already a lot. So um, that's how I see it. And, and, and I have a very good feeling. And I think to, to give them the feeling of, of uh, hope and, and dreams and that it can become possible is, um, is very important for me. Yeah. Well, that's, my, yeah, that, that's what I was highlighting, the dreams and I think the aspiration. And, and the people I talk to, I have to tell you, um, Jamie Kermon, the winnings, other folk that have come through your stable. I get a real feeling that a lot of people appreciate the fact that when they're in Europe, often on their own, you do get a few phone calls. I, I, I get a lot of feedback how well regarded you are, that uh, you're approachable, that you do try and put people under your roof from time to time. Um, I, think, I think that is really wonderful. And I think if this series um, can yeah, bring people to become what I believe to be uh, in their eyes, at least, the next Edwina. I, I, I think people do think that way in, in the young fraternity, that they have um, possibly watched your career of some 20-odd years of brilliance. Um, and, yeah, for anybody to be wanting to follow your footsteps, it's, it's a great thing. We will get to the Olympics, but just quickly, I spoke to mum earlier, Jenny, and, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I said, this daughter of yours, you know, she's amazing. She's done all these things in her life. Um, and and, and um, mum was quick to point out to me that it's not always been easy either. You, you've always been a, a passionate, driven sort of young lady. She even recalled, even in your school cross country, not on a horse, on foot, how your objective in life was to get through the finishing post first, that in everything you did, and including then going towards uni, sports, medicine, fitness was a major part. And then she also made the point, which I think is very relevant, is that um, Edwina this is great. The family will be behind you for 12 months as you go to Europe to search for your dream. But don't expect, you know, us to be there financially for you forever. 12 months might pull it up. You've got to go and get a job. Whilst we see you today as this wonderful icon of the sport, I'm really keen for people to realize, by golly, you've worked hard. You've really worked hard. Would would that be a fair assessment? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, nothing comes easy on a plate. And I always say that um, you only get to where you are from the work that you've put into it. Um, and experience is everything. Um, and, you know, if I look back at how I started and, and, and when my, my, my trip over here and where I was and where I, all the little hiccups um, that I've been through, um, which, which was, has what's made me stronger, it's what's yeah. made me more and it's given me more strength. Um, it's probably given me more um, self-reassurance. You know, I came over here, had no clue what I was doing, never been to Europe, never lived alone, um, I'd never cooked dinner, you know, never never done anything. Um, and don't, had no idea what I was throwing myself into. And um, yes. if I look back at everything I've done, I've pretty much thrown myself in the deep end with everything, which is, I wouldn't say the best way, but I think it's the fastest way to know exactly where you stand. Um, mm. And... I think um, at the end of the day, you know, life experiences are what makes you and um, they only make you better. And, and of course, um, life doesn't go that easily. And, um, no. and I think this, it's a tough sport because you're working with another you know, brain and another animal. You need a connection and you need a lot of experience. And I, I had no idea when I came here, I really had to start from, from scratch. I had a lot of great basics and ideas, but... I really thought I was a lot better than I was. And I came here and I was mm. like, I, I am like, I, this is a disaster. Like, I don't know if I can do this. And really? um, I thought, wow. yeah, really. I, I, my dressage skills were totally not there. Um, mm. I, I, I just sort of got on a road and I just went on and did it. And it's sort of how I've done everything in my life. Um, but there has to be, you have to have the, you know, the education and, 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 and the knowledge and all the other aspects which I didn't have and I had to, you know, put all those ingredients back into the cake and try to mix it up and find my way. And I yes. think having, having the Australian background of um, getting on these horses, which I have to say they're very difficult, the Australian thoroughbreds. They're not mm. easy horses to ride. Um, and I learnt a lot to ride by my feeling. Um, and, and I remember when I was having lessons with George in the very beginning, I found videos that my mum sent me, yeah. um, 20 years later. And I looked back at them and I thought, oh my God, like, I, I mean, if people thought that was me, it, it, gave, 
I gave myself so much inspiration because I didn't realize how bad I actually was, you know. And well, it, okay, that isn't was, that something in itself? You gave yourself the inspiration. It, it's a marvelous yeah. phrase. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I was impressed with honestly because if I put those videos up and people saw them, I tell you what, I think every man and their dog would think this sport is possible to do. <laughs> and thoughts that I've had because honestly, like. I had classes where in horse world there where I was falling off two times in the same class back in those yeah. days. You could get yeah. them, you know? um, and terrible horses and look, bad horses are not good for you. They teach you bad habits, um, mm. but they taught me a lot of other habits. Um, they gave me a lot of um, strength and, and, and they taught me what not to have. Um, yes. But, you know, fortunate I got a few very good horses before I left Australia and I wasn't doing it at quite a high level. I did some world cups, but um, I just thought, at that time, I, I really need to see where I need to go. I really need to see if I'm good at this. I need to see if I want to do this. I need to see if I can do this and if I had the talent. And I, I knew that I wouldn't find that when I was in Australia, but I, I had no idea that 20 years later I'd be where I was. That's absolutely. So I always say to everybody, everything in life is possible, yeah. whatever you're doing, um, because because one day I'll be brave enough <laughs> and pull out those videos and I think, Honestly, I was completely, I, I mean, I was lying in bed on my own watching these videos and I couldn't believe it. And then my mum was filming me giving <laughs> lessons. She was filming and he, she's giggling in, in, in the background. And I was like, how can you be, you know, like, I mean, because it was just, I was just so bad, you know, and, and, and I had no idea the horses stop. I'd patted on the neck and, you know, yes. George would be completely <laughs> opposite. And, you know, and, and I loved animals and um, mm. I loved that. And that's sort of what started me off in this sport. But, um, yes. yeah, I think that um, I always say, and I think that's why I've really got my feet on the ground and I'm, I'm a very positive thinker, um, no matter what day I've had, it, you know, I just go back and look at all the good, think of the good things, look at the, all the great rounds, all the success I've had um, to, to reassure myself. And I even sometimes when I've doubted myself, which everybody has, um, I've gone back and looked at those fantastic rounds on that particular horse and I've won many classes from doing that, you know, and, and, and being able to visualise and um, yes. I, I don't, yeah, I don't have a sports psychologist at all. I just, I have it all in my head and I, I just have my way and it works. But, um, yeah, anything that I can do to help anyone gives me a lot of pleasure. <laughs> wow. I, I love your groundedness and I love your honesty and, and um, yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Because people looking in from the outside in, they, they seem to see you know, the glamour and, and, and this wonderful horse lady. But, but it, it's, the journey is, is, is there, isn't it? In your career, the journey is really there. And I make the point, you've worked jolly hard for everything that you've, you've got uh, earned and, and achieved. Um, it's, it, it's interesting also, I think, um, just moving now towards Olympics, how you're on a new mayor, relatively, bought in 2019, the Belgian mayor. Um, yeah. Is it identity visceral? Is that how we say the second name? Yeah, which I can see a bit of tequila in from the previous Olympics um, where mm -hmm. you ran ninth individually. And, um, mm -hmm. and I've watched a few. Uh, and I, so I saw the young man. So he must have been a, a homebred horse by the Van der Hasselts, was it? Bred by Mikhail and then, and then ridden by yeah. Christoph. So, so you right. would only be the second owner of the horse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, right. and, and, and she's right. now 13. Um, and just for those that wish to know, which I certainly do, an Air Jordan sire um, out of a darker mare. So mm -hmm. beautiful breeding, I must say. But, but that tequila mare and, and this mare, I, I see your a little wry smile. I, I'm a, do you like that sort of gritty horse? It seems to reflect the way your personality is. Is that true? Um, I mean, honestly, I just, look, when they've got a great mind and they're positive and they want to do it for you and they give you that mm. extra bit, I don't, it doesn't bother me how they are. I'm not, right. I'm not a big fan of big slow horses. It's not, you know, I'm not, um, mm. but I'm happy to, I, I, I find my way. I, I, I try to fit a lot to the horse and, and then I try to get the horse to fit to me. So I, I do compromise quite a bit with my riding with, with the horses because I think it's so important to keep the, the naturalness as much as you yes. can and the good horse. Um, but um, I have to say, she's definitely been one of the toughest ones I've I've um, had, and um, it's taken me a lot longer to to find the buttons with her and to get that yes. click. Um, and I think partly that's got to do with the fact that um, a few things. I once again threw myself in the deep end and <laughs> first show did a World Cup 
five star World oh, Cup. Wow. Was a, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, second show, second show. I yeah. did. I did off with oh, the only second, yeah, right. Then I went to La Coruña and I jumped the World Cup and I had a couple down and um, but great. And then I went to Olympia and I was second in the Grand Prix. But mm. I just I never, and then COVID came and um, in, in sort of March 2020 and then. Basically, since then, up until the last probably six to eight months, I've never really been able to get into rhythm with her. And she's definitely a horse that because she's so feisty and um, a lot of blood and, and quite mm. in, in a good way positive yes. uh, at the jumps, yeah. she's quite a horse. And um, so she's – and then I had a lot of changing of bits and this, that and the other. And um, anyway, we've, we've, I think now because I've had a lot more competitions, I've been able to make a better program for her, understand her more. She understood me more and – during COVID, there was I did a bunch of shows, but I never, you know, every sort of every four to six weeks, which is not good for her um, yeah. program. So, so yeah, it's taken me a lot longer um, to get together. She's probably got a little bit easier scope than um, Tequila. Um, mm. Tequila has a little bit of a better technique than yeah. her in, in front. Um, but um, yeah, they're, they're they're similar in a lot of ways. I think Tequila um, is a bit more in 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 her mind and the way she thinks. She's very proud of herself. Yes. Um, but his identity is very submissive and she's adorable and she's very sweet. I've never seen her with the ease back and she's a, whereas the other one is a bit more quieter, but they're, they're similar, similar types. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, just doing some research, um, potentially 70 plus de um, percent humidity and up to 45 degrees feels like temperature in Tokyo. Uh, uh, does that concern you? Have, have you done any preparation around adjusting the mare towards that sort of atmosphere and temperature? Um, not, we haven't really had the weather mm. to be quite honest. Right. <laughs> it's summer and it's windy and raining. But, um, right. so but look, she's got a lot of blood. She, she, she doesn't get tired. Um, mm. I've ne never had her tired. I'd, I'd be happy if she was tired to be quite honest. So, um, right. you, there's a way of getting them tired and, and a way of, of, of working with that. And I think it's very important that, you know, the muscles are, are good and fit and, mm. you know, you you know, check the blood regularly, keep an eye on everything that's going and um, have her the best way possible. I know in Hong Kong it was um, it was also quite high humidity then. And um, But, yeah, um, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty okay about all that, I, I think, yeah. till now to get there, but I'm not too worried about it yet. Um, just one thing for five seconds to touch on. Um, we're all very used, unfortunately, to COVID and obviously the Tokyo Games affected by COVID. What we weren't so across over here in Australia was the uh, detail of the equine herpes virus, mm. how that really impacted on preparation. And if I've got it right, almost closed down the shows in, uh, in Europe. Am I going over the top or was it that bad? And, and, and do you feel it's still that serious? I'm, I'm not quite sure where that's all ended up. Well, at that time, it was very serious and um, mm. it was quite disturbing. And, and, you know, we were very worried about all the horses and very careful about where the horses were going, what they were doing and other horses coming in. And fortunately we've got the show stables here so we can separate everything and we could be very careful with that. But yeah, look, I mean, to be honest, um, COVID and that happening at the same time was a, a bit of a bomb, but being used to not traveling too much and going on the shows too much, I think everyone was in a bit of a system. Um, yes. But I think, no, yeah, now it's quietened down. It's, I have, we haven't heard of any cases. It's been oh, good. pretty good for the two to three months what I've been um, aware of. So, yeah, I think um, they've got it under control. Touch wood. <laughs> Touch wood, yes. Um, so just touching on the games then, um, the gentleman, um, the Santiago Varela, the course builder, uh, I think yeah. he's built World Cup finals and he's built Nations Cup finals uh, and the Europeans. Um, what do you think of him? If, 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 how's he going to go, do you think? Um, to be quite honest, I've... I've I've jumped a lot of his courses and um, yes. he is very difficult. He's very he's tough. Good. Right. Very, very difficult, very tough. Um, he likes to build big. He builds strong. Um, yeah, he's clever. He's, he's, he's very clever at, at the way he builds his courses, but um, it's probably going to be a very tough Olympics. <laughs> really? You're putting it out there. That's good. Be wow. That's interesting. Um, yeah. From, from the <laughs> Like, to be honest, when I rode the wig in the car, um, he wasn't building them, but that was, I must say, quite soft um, mm. considering what I expected. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and, and what he, how he builds and I, 
all the courses I've done from him. He's very, very good. Um, and I'm very happy when I've jumped his courses and had success. Right. Yes. Because <laughs> it's very challenging, um, which is good because I think mm. it'll sort everybody out. Um, and um, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. Mm, 20 days away. You've got me um, thinking, wonder what round one will look like. Because in, in Rio, it was probably a, a fairish round one day. But I'm wondering how this gentleman will go on, on day one. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're back into Tokyo. Um, 1964 was our best ever uh, placing by any Australian competitor in the shape of John Fay, who finished fourth in the, in the individual. Um, talking to John this afternoon, again, there was another person who was thankful of coming across you in Europe and, and, and um, getting into a few shows via your hospitality, which he was very grateful. But he also said that how much he wishes you all the very best and yourself and the team. And that if you were to knock him off, his perch, as he puts it, he'd be the first to congratulate you. Have you got something perhaps we could look towards where your mindset might be towards individual and or, or, or team? I, I believe if we finish eighth position, we qualify a team for Paris. Have, have you thought that through or just take it day by day? <laughs> um, look, I think, um, as everybody knows, this will be the first team appearance for the three of us. Mm. Um, and so... Um, uh, it's 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 a and it's a completely different format um, going from individual to Nations Cup and mm. from my experience the Nations Cups have been a little softer you've sort of been able to gradually walk yourself into them um, and and then and then step up to the to the yeah. vigil but now being the opposite way around I'm very curious to know what he's going to do I'm curious to know how people are going to plan I know for example the French team they already know who's going to jump the team um, like Simon oh, wow. Deleuze who's yeah, he's going as reserve, but he knows he's actually going to go in um, as the Nations Cup. So right. they've already had their plan. Um, they know they're going to save that horse for that class. So he also said to me, he said, I don't think I've got much chance. My horse is not a fast horse, so I better save it up for the Nations Cup. So I know a lot of countries have got their plans put in place, but things do change, as we all know. Um, yeah. So I think, unfortunately, because um, we only have three of us, it's, it's much tougher for us to be able to make any kind of planning. Um, mm. So we have to go in the individual, um, you know, make the best uh, possible result we can and the best um, plan from that for the Nations Cup and see, you know, which who should go first, order of go um, and all those things. But we, we have to just go in there and give it our best shot. We've got no other choice. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I think um, Johnny echoes a lot of the sentiments that, Everybody in Australia is pushing towards you, wishing you um, a fantastic Olympics. And I mean, if we can get qualified for Paris, fantastic. And if indeed yourself and that little mare, is she little? Uh, how tall is she? She'd be um, like 16 hands, maybe one, yeah, yeah. one, six, yeah. two. Yeah. 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 She's okay. quite long, though. Yes. But, uh, from what I've seen, I really love her. So, Conscious of your time, you've been so open. It's it's unbelievable how well you've just allowed us to get into the mindset of, of, of how you're traveling towards Tokyo and um, really enjoyed getting some of the backstory to your career. It, it's been marvelous. Um, I asked Kermo this last night, and, I, and, and if I may, i just finish with this question. Because you, you have a world of global championships and World Cups and WEGs and so forth, do you feel that the Olympics is still the pinnacle of sport for, for show jumping? Um, yeah, look, the thing is with the Olympics at the end of the day, you can't, um, you know, you don't necessarily have the highest ranked riders going, so it's it's chosen. Um, but, I mean, it's different, for example, for for example, a lot of the other shows because you, you have the best riders or the best combinations, for example, in yes. the world going. So yep. It does throw you up again in the mix. But, um, look, it's absolutely something on everyone's bucket list and it's certainly on my bucket list. And, um, <laughs> And it's um, it just look it's it's just a different feeling because um, you know there's a lot of hype and it's a yeah. very traditional um, games um, especially this one <laughs> um, and I think you know it's it's everybody wants to go to an Olympics it'll always be you know um, high up there of course and um, I'm not saying you know at the end of the day you've got to be very good on that day whereas mm. you know say for example the global tour you've got to be very consistent over a longer period of time so. It's different, but look, it's good to have everything there, and it's it's what everyone wants to be at and yes. achieving the best results. 
that, and I think it's um it's it's wonderful that equestrian is still there with uh, with the Olympics. And more teams this year as well than than, than at Rio, um, thirty five versus twenty seven. So that's interesting. Yeah. But anyway, the um the uh, the the city of romance in Paris awaits in two thousand twenty four. So, uh, but before then, there's a really big shot at the games, and I just can't help but think um it's 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 you've, you've done. You, you know, you're knocking on the door of everything else, and I would love to think that we can see a great result from yourself individually and, of course, as a team at these Olympics. So I really thank you again for your time. Um, really enjoyed talking to you. So good luck for these Tokyo Games. Thank you very much. Huh? Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Thank you. <laughs>